Well, Jeff Brown, if she has nothing to hide, why not let him ask? I, I don't understand what, why she would not answer any question if she has nothing to hide. Well, because she's being looked at as a suspect. The very fact that you're asking the question in this way indicates that some people, like yourself, think that she might be involved in this. So why should she go under the, under the gun and answer these questions? What happens if she answers a question the wrong way and people say, aha, you know, you're guilty because of that? You know, th that's the reason why we have these protections in place. And let's let the criminal justice system work it out. And let's not use the civil discovery process to get around the federal protections and the constitutional protections that they get. is doing the exact same thing jeff brown and yeah. he got a bestseller they're making a movie he doesn't seem to be no. wearing a scarlet letter no they, in fact he, he they did a movie on this and he's portrayed as a hero and he, and everybody's applauding him and, and laughing at it you know where is there this this understanding that if you just decide to do a hookup there's some code that you can't talk about it or or somebody can't mention it and you know what guys do it all the time and i'm a guy and i'll tell you right now Guys have been doing this for history. She did it. It's, it's small potatoes compared to what men have been doing. And you know what? This is a, a oh. buyer beware type situation. Be careful who you no. hook up with because you know what? This can Buddy. happen. Awkward position. If you're going to make tough rules for other people and have a reputation as a, you know, lock them up and throw away the key, that that's the solution, what do you do when you're confronted with alleged criminal behavior within yeah. your own family. Yeah, it is a little tough spot, but his office also had what's called a diversion program, which allowed first-time offenders such as this to go into a program, do some probation, and the, and the charge get dismissed. So it wouldn't be inappropriate for the office to do that. But let me just say that we, we keep saying that it's alleged that she stole these items. It may very well be, and I've had the, uh, clients that have told me this, where they didn't have anything or any place to put the items, and they put them in their pocket and they're shopping and looking around, and before they realize that they'd gone past the register. So it may very well be there's an innocent explanation to this. It may not be that outright case of somebody that just stealing these items, because as you said, she had $300 in her purse. You were shaking your head, Jeff. Yeah, I, you know, I, I do this for a living. I represent people that aren't famous all the time, and I've had deals much better than, than Sheen's case. I've had those same facts and got the cases dismissed. So, you know, we're looking at these few cases and saying, oh my gosh, look at the results, but I can give you hundreds of results. Yeah, because you probably are not a. Didn't have this. You're not a public defender who defends poor people. That's why. What? Okay, what that, but if, you go, on, if you go on Mothers Against Mandatory Minimum, you'll see people yeah, but, locked up for okay. life for having one I, little rock of listen, crack cocaine, and people who, who have lines of cocaine will end up doing just a couple of years, if, if at all, and these people with rock cocaine, who are generally poor minority, end up getting sent away for the rest of their lives. There is a two-tiered system of justice no, in this listen. country. I myself have personally covered it when I've gone to court to cover a high-profile case. These and gotten there early and seen one person after another with a public defender sent away the slammer they barely knew what hit them. Well, I, I've been doing this for 20 years. I understand what minimum, mandatory minimums are all about. It's five grams of crack in the federal system. But I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's not always that way. There are lots of times where justice happens, and many of the times, for those that don't have the money. I, I see, I, I'm on a court-appointed list in federal court. I handle those cases. the airlines and wonder about whether those rules need to be changed there's also the other responsibility of the people who make the decision to send 14 puppies on a plane yeah <clears throat> the FAA can certainly can, can increase the fines on these airlines for all of these deaths or lost and frankly I don't know how you lose a dog but the real problem here is that in this country people like you Jane and I know for myself absolutely love dogs I love animals and so yet if somebody was to kill my dog unless they tortured my dog, all I can recover is the value of that dog as a piece of baggage, as a chair or a television. And I think we need to recognize in this country that we hold our pets in a whole different light than just a piece of baggage. And I think we need to elevate them so that you can have, you can have crimes such as um, you know, destroying an animal or shooting my dog or something like that. We need to get, I agree. find I out where we can move that. Yeah, but, you know, Jane, you and I have gone back over this. I wish somebody would give me some facts 
that would lead me to believe, like everybody else wants to, that she's involved. I, I know they have the opinion, and they constantly say there's no doubt in their mind, but nobody's giving me any facts, and we don't have to go back that far. I think we go back to June or July, where that girl uh, from Minis Missouri, Alyssa Mayer, was snatched out of her front yard and found 100 miles away. So it's not inconceivable that people are snatching, unfortunately, children. And that may be what happened here. We don't know, but I just wish somebody, someone would give me some more facts so that I would say, well, yeah, you know what, she, she is a person of size. husband says that the cops told him that she tried to hire a landscaper to kill him right. several months that has before nothing to do the with child the, That has nothing to do with the abduction. That has nothing to do with the abduction. And again, that's coming from him. I mean, that comes through a, d a divorce that's going on. Law enforcement has been really quiet on, any, on all fronts regarding this. There's been well, nothing from be. law enforcement. The well, morning tiring went But missing. then all we have is him. You know, that is very, very bizarre, Jeff Brown. You've covered many cases. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it always makes the cases very tough, both to investigate and then to, to prosecute when you don't have any circumstantial or any evidence at all. Um, you know, the question that I have really is, and I know law enforcement isn't talking, but I'd love to know more about what happened at that school. What were the people that were there? What were the things that they remember seeing? Uh, I know they talked to a lot of, of parents. Uh, that were there as well at that time frame. I think that's the crucial part of this case, is, are those witnesses and any cameras that may have been there at the school. Give me a break, Jeff Brown. Most people don't get 90 days for this offense. So, she is I mean, she got hit. She, she got hit harsher than most people would in that oh, courtroom. Please, and that the fact is that so she, not true. That's it is so true. And the fact that she is getting out now, hey, that's not, that's not up to her. That's up to the jail. And you know what? They do that for all their inmates. All oh, the inmates they let them all out at midnight after get getting a makeup makeover they from their, get their glam team? They all, get, they all get released early. It's not uncommon. This is what happens. You know, it, she never should have got 90 days. That, and every, all the lawyers in that courtroom say 90 days was too harsh you know what? for this judge to have She had a high Uh, assault with a deadly weapon, vehicular whatever? No, no, I don't. And, and furthermore, that's not what she's doing the 90 days on. She's doing the 90 days because she missed some alcohol classes. It's a violation of probation. Yeah, that's probation the she on got 90. her DUIs. And, and she's had a reckless DUI, driving. Exactly. That was part of it. That was a DUI. Which is a, which is a misdemeanor. Nobody well, gets 90 days. Jeff Brown, do you have any thoughts on her role? Would she perhaps get immunity and then spill yeah. what she might know about Terry? Yeah, it's a little early, though, for, this, for the government to be giving anybody immunity. I think what they want to find out is those 10 days, and especially the 90 minutes where she's unaccounted for, I think they want to know what was discussed between her and Terry. Remember now, anything that a defendant says, if a person is charged as a defendant, can ultimately be used against them in that courtroom. So if she's made some incriminating inf statements or some things to Dee Dee, Dee Dee can re repeat them and they'll be used against Terry. So I think they just want to find out from Dee Dee, you know, what happened during those 10 days? How was her, what was her emotion like? What was her reactions like? What did she tell you? And try to account for those 90 minutes. The El Paso School District, when asked for a statement, sent us the suspect's resume, which I find extraordinarily bizarre. But looking at it, I see, you know, he's worked in a lot of different schools and community groups and all over the place. So now what's the investigation? They're going to have to go to all these places and find out what happened there. Yeah, they've kind of given the uh, ICE and, and Customs a roadmap as to where else to look. You know, in the federal system, what they're looking for are images. And if you have a video, that's worth 75 images. So they count up the number of images that you have. And then if the victims are under 12, if the victims are involved in photos involving sadomasochistic acts, the sentence just keeps going up. So he's looking probably at about a sentence of 30 years under the federal system. But what's really disturbing here is normally we have cases like this where they're downloading and trading photos, and these photos were taken elsewhere by others. Here we actually have somebody that's taking the photos or the videos themselves. They're creating these images. And the real damaging damage in this case will be if he actually took these videos and put them out there on the internet because they'll never get them back and this will haunt these victims forever.
her because she didn't want her husband to find out she was cheating? Yeah, I think that's that's plausible. I think that's actually probably what happened here. There, there can be no question. I mean, I'm not the psychiatrist, but come on. This woman's got mental health issues. There's no question. But it's really a sad, sad story on, on our society that this lady with these obvious mental health, health issues is living amongst people and friends and coworkers, and nobody sees this, nobody reports this, nobody reaches out to help this woman. That's, this is sad to me. I mean, that this woman is existing with these mental health issues over this period of time, and nobody knows and nobody reaches out. It Jeff Brown, criminal defense attorney. I hear you've been shaking your head. Yeah, I couldn't disagree with you more. I mean, you, you, you're not understanding the criminal justice system. There's no way this judge, especially a woman judge, wants to put this guy for 10 years probation. The problem is that the prosecutor doesn't have a good case. They've made a deal here, and they're afraid they're going to lose this case Nonsense. if they go to trial. They're Nonsense. trying to salvage. She had a filing a false police report. This girl has probably very little credibility. You don't oh, think the please. prosecutor wants to put this guy away? Well, let me tell you the something. Here's what's so twisted about this that. case. The girl, Simmons, it's raped, okay? When she was, what, 15 years old, uh, got more prison time for falsifying a police report than he might for raping her. Now, we're calling this girl Ashley. She came they can't forward prove and spoke. The case. She spoke because they she was so outraged. It, Let's listen to her. And also a laptop. Given that there are concerns that he could be an alleged serial killer, what do they need to do with that laptop? Well, I think they're going to look at the laptop to see who he's been talking to, what the emails are. But let's not jump ahead here and call him a serial killer. I mean, there's just no evidence to that. Granted, it looks horrible for him right now, but the one thing I still want to see is the videotape. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a running counter that tell by the second and the minute. I want to see that tape and see who else came into that room from the time he left to the time they found the body. And if there's nobody, then you're pro probably pretty right in closing the prison door behind him. But until I see that tape, I think he's still got to keep an open mind and remember he's innocent until proven guilty, even as bad as it looks right now. Let's look at that tape to make sure nobody else went into that room. Jeff Brown, why do you think they can't make a case with three girls? Well, because they can't always bring all the facts into, into one courtroom on one trial. Sometimes you can, but the law usually prevents that. You don't want to convict somebody because they may have committed crimes in other cases. So the DA is looking at this case, but I can guarantee you, no DA, and I was a prosecutor, we would love to try cases. We wanted to put people away. There's no way this DA said, oh, I'm going to give away the farm and get all this bad press today. It just doesn't happen. There's a problem in this case. This they know about it, and they're afraid that they won't be able to convict this guy. That's the only reason they're doing this. I hear you've been shaking your head. Yeah, I couldn't disagree with you more. I mean, you, you, you're not understanding the criminal justice system. There's no way this judge, especially a woman judge, wants to put this guy for 10 years probation. The problem is that the prosecutor doesn't have a good case. They've made a deal here, and they're afraid they're going to lose this case Nonsense. if they go to trial. They're Nonsense. trying to salvage. She had a filing a false police report. This girl has probably very little credibility. You don't oh, think the please. prosecutor wants to put this guy away? Well, let me tell you the something. Here's what's so twisted about this that. case. The girl, Simmons, it's, raped, okay? When she was, what, 15 years old, uh, got more prison time for falsifying a police report than he might for raping her. Now, we're calling this girl Ashley. She came forward and spoke. The case. She spoke because they she was so outraged. It, Let's listen to her. They can't prove this, though. Jeff Brown, what is the most a pet owner could face if their dog attacks? Yeah, it's all controlled by statutes and by states. Most states don't have laws such as they did in California for the famous dog mauling case, which allowed them to criminally prosecute uh, the owners of the dog for the attack. So it all depends upon the state. You may have civil damages where you're entitled to be compensated if you know your dog is vicious or you're careless in allowing that dog out. But it's all driven by states. And a lot of states don't have criminal charges for a, for a dog attacking somebody. So it really, it's all driven by those states. Do you look at, at this as being something that's more than just a random drive-by shooting? 
Well, it, it looks that way. There was a hollow tip bullet that was used. Those aren't usually used by just the average criminal on the street. It also seems that the the execution or the murder was done in an execution style with at least somebody else that was driving that car. So it, there seems to be a lot of people that are involved in this. What we do know, though, from a criminal defense standpoint, is they don't have probable cause to arrest him prior to that search warrant. It sounds like somebody's implicating him, but they don't have that driver. But Jeff, but Jeff, if a person, but Jeff, I know they don't have probable cause, but the per, the guy pulls out a gun and puts a bullet into his own head. I mean, when you hear yeah, that, that that's that leads you to believe that he had something to do with something. No, it does. It leads you to believe that he had something to do with it, but unfortunately for them, this may lead them to a cold trail. It seems as if somebody is saying he was involved, that he was in that car, but they weren't a witness to it because they would have arrested him otherwise. So it's a lead that they're pursuing. He mm. now takes himself out of the equation. So they may. this may be a cold case. That hopefully that gun is going to lead them to something, some forensics or something that ties that to the weapon, to, I mean to the murder. They've got to increase this guy's sentence, correct? Yeah, and they, they obviously will. The, what this illustrates to me, though, is that there's a problem here, I think, with security guards. I've represented security guards that have allowed stuff to get leaked into prison. That's I don't think this is a question of somebody bringing it to him. I think this is a question of guards being paid and sneaking this stuff in. It's way too much stuff. They have to crack down on who is guarding these inmates better so that this, this doesn't happen. And then they need to start looking at these cells better. How can this guy have a cell phone and a shake and marijuana and nobody find this uh, right away? It, they have to be doing a better job. But I think it comes down to getting better people in there that are actually guarding these inmates. And I hope that this mother, that she takes this further and she asks that they actually bring forward a prosecution of who these people are, these guards are, that are allowing these things into the prisons. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you, you really, as law enforcement, you really have about 24 hours to solve a crime before it really, the, the statistics go dramatically downhill to ever being able to solve it. And the problem here is you just don't have the witnesses. You don't have the, you know, what we call the CSI evidence because of the burning of the body. So what you need is eyewitnesses. And unfortunately, unless there were law enforcement or investigators talking to who was in that club the next day, talking to the bouncers, thoroughly going through that, you know, you, you lose these eyewitnesses, and then a year later, it's going to be really hard to find them. All right, Jeff Brown right. was saying exactly. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this was an abusive woman. She was drug addicted. She was a prostitute. She was not fit to be raising this boy. It's no wonder that he turned out this way. I'm not saying she's all to blame, but if we're going to be playing the blame game here, this mother, this woman, takes some responsibility for creating this monster. Well, uh, I agree true. with you, John. And what, Jeff Brown? It, it's not true. The crime rates, violent crime rates, murder rates, all crime rates are the lowest.